right, welcome to today's demonstration with Tegris Consulting. My name is Jarrett Donaldson and I'm a consultant here um, on the team. And in today's uh, demonstration, what I'm going to show you how to do is create your own custom fields in SAP. And in SAP's terminology, they're called user-defined fields. And you know, a lot of times I'll have these requests when you start using SAP Business One for the first time. You know, every every company is going to need their own special fields of, of for whatever they need entered in, and SAP allows you to enter these um, custom fields into all different modules of SAP, whether it's documents, marketing, uh, master data, whatever it is, you can do that. And so today I'm going to show you a simple example of how to create your own custom field or user-defined field on a sales order. And so. Um, the area that you do it, and I'll open up cells order to show you where these um, user fields are located. So you see when I pull up the window over here to the right, on mine automatically pops up a little um, table to the right that's going to store all my custom fields, you know, as default. And then these can be sorted um, by little, you know, folders or um, or categories. You can see if I go to all categories, you see a lot of them that I have, but then I have a specific one that doesn't have any added to it. And that's what we'll add today is we'll put one under this category. But vice versa, you can also drag them onto the main screen as well, and I'll show you how to do that later on. But first, if if you don't know how to turn this, this user to find window on and off, it's up here at the edit, next to edit, right in there, at view, there's something called user defined fields. So if you click on that, it'll turn it on. And vice versa, if you need to turn it off, you can do it right there as well. And so if you ever log in and it's missing, don't worry, you can go up there and turn it on. And if it's if you need it turned off, go ahead and go over there to the right. So I'll I'll turn mine on for the rest of the demonstration. But the area that you actually go to create a new field is up here under the tools bar, customization tools, and then user defined fields. And there's values and tables that we can show you later on. But for now we're gonna do a user defined field. It's going to pull up a little window with all of the um, folders you see in your main menu over here. So you know you can add it to whatever level you'd like. So if it's master data, you can add it here, marketing documents, accounting, so on and so forth. But for mine, it's going to be under marketing data. And marketing data will um, entail all of the marketing documents. So AR, AP, you know, if you add it to a sales order, it's going to go sales order, invoice, and be consistent all the way through. So you don't have to worry about selecting which specific one when it's coming to marketing documents. But what you do have to worry about is where in the marketing document are places. So at the title level, so is the at the the document as a whole, into the rows level, or then also you can even do it into the freight um, section. But for today, we're going to add it to the document as a whole. So if you click on here, it will show you all the list of the current ones you have. And you can come in here and update an existing one or remove an existing one. But we're going to add one. So what you do is you click on the, um, the header, the title of it, and then go ahead and click Add. And so first, you're going to go ahead and give it the description and title, and you know, what what the name of the field is going to be. So under title, this all has to be one word because this is going to be the um, the field's code for when you're referencing for queries or whatnot. So I'm going to create one that shows me if customers are high risk or not. So we're going to call this one high risk. And then description is what you'll actually see, your end users will see on the um, the document itself. So once we're set with the description and titles, we can then classify what type of uh, custom field is it going to be. So you can, you know, have it be, you know, units and totals, and then you can have a subtype, you know, percentages, prices, vice versa. You can do dates and times, you know, whatever you prefer. But for ours, it's simple. We're just going to do alphanumeric, and then you can say what's the maximum number of characters allowed. Mine's just going to be yes or no, so it doesn't matter. So ten is fine, but you can change that and edit it here. And then. Another nice thing you can do with these user-defined fields is validate it. So you can, you know, create rules if you go under advanced that it has to start with, contain, end with a certain character, so that it has to do that. Um, you can link um, entities to it, so you can link a table to it or a user-defined object, which is a little bit more advanced. But you can do that, and then also you can just put in valid values and. And I'll do this as an example. So ours are just going to be yes or no. So I might as well create one a Y for yes. Create another new one in for no. So I'm all set there. And so in this field, there'll be a drop down with only these two options available. Uh, so once you're done with the validation section, you go down here and move down to entering a default value. So if 
if you want it to, as soon as you in, enter in uh, a, a document, you want it to populate with something um, automatically, so you don't have to go in there every single time and just do it for the exception, you can do that. So I'm going to turn it on to have it be no automatically unless we have to change it to yes. And then you can also make user-defined fields mandatory or not by clicking here. So that's a nice little feature. But once you're satisfied with everything, you'll click add. And it's going to do its thing and say, hey, FYI, you know, we're making changes, so if there's any open windows, we're going to close it down. So you'll see my window's going to close. It's going to prompt me if I want to save or not. I'm fine since I didn't do anything to it. But if it's done, creating the user-defined field, you'll see, oh, there's our green arrow, our green uh, bar, letting us know it's complete. And sure enough, there it is right below um, the marketing documents. So when we go back now into the sales order, or it could be ARMS, whatever, you'll see that it's going to be over here to the right. Um, but on the BP data category, it's not currently there because I haven't assigned it to it. So if we switch back to all categories, you see there's the high risk, yes or no, that we just created. So if we want to assign it to the specific category that we have, you can do that in the same, same general spot, customization tools, and then settings is going to show you a list of all the user-defined fields you have created in their assigned um, category. So here's ours. It will show you, and you can make some active, inactive, you can make them visible or not, so you can clean up your window right here, and also you can change the order, but what we're concerned about right now is assigning it to a category, so you can come in here and you can create a new category if needed, but we're going to assign it to BP Data, click OK, and you'll see as soon as we did that, it added it right here, so there's the user-defined field in that section, this is useful you know, for categories, let's say you have multiple types of people using the same marketing document. Um, or you know you might want to separate AR from AP. Maybe you have user-defined fields for AR and AP. You might want to create a category for only AP and one for AR, and it will only show you the user-defined fields assigned to their category. So it helps clean it up a little bit. Uh, but let's say you had one of these uh, fields that you created, and you want to have it on the main screen, and not over here to the right. You can also do that, and you do that inside of Tools, Edit Form UI, and if this isn't visible. And it's just grayed out. It's probably because you're not actually selected into the window. So make sure you have the window open and, and active, and then it will be available. And then the bar will turn black, letting you know that you're in the edit UI mode. And so what you do when you're here is you simply just click on the field that you're wanting to bring over, and you just hold and you know basically drag and drop. So I'm going to click, and you don't click on the title. You click on the actual box. So I hold down. You see the little black um, border go around the field. And as long as I keep holding down, I can drag it and drop it wherever I like. So I'm going to bring it over here to the middle. And sure enough, there it brings it over. And if I'm satisfied, I can exit out. Um, just click up here, and it's going to ask me if I want to save. I'm going to say, yes, I want to save it. And then I don't need to save the entire sales order because I didn't add anything. So I can click no there. But next time I log into the sales order, it's going to be right there in the middle for me. So um, really nice uh, feature to move stuff around if you if needed. So. You know, that kind of concludes it from the basic standpoint of creating user defined fields or custom fields. Um, you know, we may put together a more advanced one for you later on, but this should get you started and be able to play around and create your own uh, fields that you need for the company. So, thank you for tuning in to our session today, and please take a look at our other uh, videos for more tips and tricks on SAP Business One.